Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some amazing honey cookies bursting with flavor. So let's get started. First off, into a medium bowl, I want three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour. These cookies whip up really fast. Now I want half a teaspoon of salt. This gives us a really nice contrast for that sweet, amazing honey. In you go. A quarter teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. So we'll puff the cookies up just perfectly. Grab a whisk. Our scale is done. And we're gonna whisk this up just to really distribute all those leavening agents. That looks great. Now it's time to grab your stand mixer or a big bowl if you're using an electric hand mixer. Now it's time for the good stuff. I want one cup or 226 grams of unsalted butter and it should be softened. If your butter is properly softened, it'll bend. You can press into it with this a little bit of resistance and that means it'll mix up really well. I want the butter and honey to be completely combined here. Okay, to the bowl, I'm gonna add one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar. Popping the paddle on, and we're gonna mix this uh, medium for just a few seconds so the butter and sugar get a chance to mix up. There we go. All right. It's always a good idea to cream your butter if you're gonna add anything to it because there could be some little harder parts lurking around that'll be difficult to mix in later. And now it's time for the star. <laughs> Ties into this one. Okay, there we go. Now it's time for the star ingredient, and that's the honey. This honey comes from our hives, so it's extra special to me. All the flowers that are on our property like helped to make this amazing honey. It smells so good. One note about this recipe: this is the flavor, and honey is not honey is not honey. There's different types. There's different categories. There's different qualities. So use a honey that you really enjoy the taste of because these cookies are like honey magically transformed into a cookie. You will taste this. So just make sure that you like it. Pour that honey in. Wow, looky here. That looks amazing. And one of the nice things about having bees is every year is different. There's different wildflowers growing in our fields. It might be a wetter year or drier, so the honey could be a light color or a dark amber. It's always gonna be a little bit of a surprise when you harvest it. Now we're gonna mix this on medium speed for about a minute until it's really well combined. And yes, you should scrape the bowl down. Okay. There we go. I love the color, I love the smell, I love the taste. In fact, this would be delicious, <laughs> just on toast. While that mixes, I'm gonna crack two large eggs into a bowl. This looks really nicely mixed. Scrape the bowl down. I love these cookies any time of year. They're always gonna be delicious, and George and Lachlan will like scarf them up in a moment, but these are actually a traditional cookie in so many different cultures. Honey is one of the original sweeteners before sugar cane got refined and everything like that. So you'll find honey cookies in the Jewish tradition. Like these are wonderful treats for Rosh Hashanah. This is also a delicious Christmas cookie from Greece. So Melo Macarona, and that's not pronouncing it correctly, but it's pretty close. And Melo or Meli means honey. So these are honey cookies. And I grew up with these during Christmas time. Some people might have had them during Hanukkah or New Year's. And sometimes it's your grandma loved to make a honey cookie because they are delicious. All right, back to business. We're gonna add two eggs in one at a time while mixing on medium low. So one. And two. I also want one teaspoon of vanilla just for a little extra kiss of flavor. I want you to look into the bowl now because some people get worried at this time. You had a beautiful concoction of butter, honey, and sugar. Then you added those eggs in, and now it's a little bit cottage cheesy, like this. That's fine. You're not making, a, like, this isn't like a delicate, very ethereal cake. These are cookies. It'll come together with the flour. So all you wanna do right now is scrape the bowl down and go to the next step. If you look at my spatula right now, you'll see there's a very loose mixture on top but the bottom has a really thick, compacted butter mixture. So that's why scraping is so important. 
you want a homogenous mixture. That's the same throughout, so every cookie bakes up the same. Okay, one more mix just to break things up a little bit. There we go, just one more time. Just a little bit of extra mixing really brought things together. Now, instead of looking like cottage cheese, I have finer granules of butter and sugar mixed in with that egg, so it'll give me a much better cookie. With the mixture on low, I'm gonna gradually add the flour in and mix until it's just almost combined. Just a little sprinkle. And by the way, if you wanted to, you definitely could have added some spices in. Maybe half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a little cardamom, allspice, some nutmeg. It's really up to you and what flavors you love. This came together so beautifully. I have a wonderful homogenous batter. All that's left is a final scrape right now to make sure there's nothing lurking on the bottom or sides. By the way, if this recipe rings a bell, you're like, wait a second, I make a cookie like this, or my grandmother made one, but in our culture, we use this or that, or there are several differences. Let me know in the comments. I love learning about new recipes, and I am 100% sure that there's like a Turkish cookie that is almost exactly the same, or there's a Persian variety that has maybe like a little bit of rose water or some pistachios thrown in. Just let me know. I feel like I'm just making up recipes now, so leave a comment, I'm all ears. In the meantime, this dough needs to chill. These cookies will spread in the oven, and it really needs the setup time. So I want at least one hour to it's gonna be good overnight, also an option. Just cover this up, pop it into the fridge, and we'll be back with the magic of editing. Towards the end of your chill time, set that oven to 350 so it's nice and hot when you scoop out your dough. We're gonna scoop out one and a half tablespoon sized balls of dough, give it a roll, and plop those onto your parchment lined baking sheet. These cookies are so good, so soft and delicious but they will spread, so we're gonna work in batches and just do one tray at a time. Give them about three inches of space in between each ball. Just a quick roll will really give them a nice shape. My first batch is ready to go into the oven, 350 for 10 to 12 minutes or until the edges are browning. While they bake, I'm gonna roll the second batch out. I'm not kidding, I've been thinking about all the different variations of this cookie around the world. There's a Korean version, there is a Turkish version, Persian, it list goes on, and I was like, oh my gosh, pistachios, walnuts, like all these other flavors can get mixed in. So just for fun, I'm gonna roll a couple of these guys in some chopped nuts. I bet it'll be like crunchy and like delicious. Or it could be a total failure, we'll see. Okay, hot out of the oven, look at these. If they kind of creeped together, or if they're a little bit too sprout for your taste, grab a big cookie cutter and just corral them together. They need to finish baking on this baking sheet, so give them five minutes to kind of firm up. In the meantime, if you work fast, you can just corral them back into a beautiful circle with a little bit more height. It's up to you though. Out of the oven, look at these guys, oh my gosh. I'm in love with the nuts already. I know it's gonna taste amazing, but I will wait and do an actual taste test. <laughs> that is so delicious. Those crunchy toasted nuts with this soft, chewy honey cookie are amazing. I'm definitely adding this tip into the blog post. So delicious. I hope you get a chance to try this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my cookie playlist.